Hello and welcome to Estate Agent Today and Letting Agent Today's latest video summary of the week's news. And what a week it's been with a series of mega stories. Let's start with Countrywide, Britain's biggest estate and letting agency group, which continues to undergo a series of major management restructures. The biggest departure from the company this week is Peter Young, the managing director of John D. Wood, who has been a fixture on the London property scene for almost 40 years. He goes as part of a large overhaul of what Countrywide now calls its retail department. Within this, three divisional managers, directors, 12 retail directors and a series of other individual management posts have been announced. There's a new managing director of Hamptons International being appointed shortly too. That agency is also part of Countrywide. This is all part of a revolution that's been taking place since Countrywide Chief Executive Alison Platt took office. We gather there's more to come. Platt says it's all part of the plan to double the size of the company. Another big story this week concerned the portal wars between On The Market and Zoopla. The estate agent who earlier this month wrote an open letter criticising On The Market Lisa Akari has now told a state agent today that there are 20 other on the market member agents who agree with her. Akari says her criticisms are that there are simply too few leads coming through from on the market, that the only one other portal rule is unhelpful and that new on the market features like an international section are expensive luxuries when agents really want improved visitor numbers and leads. To cap another difficult week for On The Market, Zoopla reported a modest increase in its number of member agents too. On the letting side of the industry, easily the biggest story of this week was the one we've been waiting for for some months. Confirmation that right to rent is coming into effect. It starts on February the 1st and will replicate the pilot project which has been operating in the West Midlands for some months now. Under right to rent, landlords should check identity documents for all new tenants and take copies. This includes checking a UK passport, a European economic area passport or identity card, a permanent residence card or travel document showing indefinite leave to remain, a home office immigration status document or a certificate of registration or naturalisation as a British citizen. Some landlords groups say it's just too bureaucratic and likely to produce accidental racist and inconsistent decisions on tenants. The Association of Residential Letting Agents, by contrast, says the pilot worked better than expected, so it's given a cautious welcome to the measure. Still with the rentals business, we had this week the first figures for Build to Rent. This is the institutional purpose-built rental blocks which are funded by pension, hedge funds and the like. The British Property Federation says there are only 3,404 build-to-rent units in London, a meagre 240 elsewhere in the country. That's not much, but there is a pipeline of build-to-rent units seeking planning consent. That's around 14,000 in London and about 7,000 elsewhere. Even so, compared to the size of the overall private rental sector, over 9 million people privately rented in England, for example, Bill to rent so far is a mere drop in the ocean. The letting sector was also in the news thanks to the final report coming from the property ombudsman, Christopher Hamer, who retires next month. In the first six months of this year, the property ombudsman had no fewer than 9,141 inquiries from the public, most of which went on to be formal complaints. About 58% of them were about letting agents and about 30% were about sales agents. Part of the increase in lettings complaints was because more agents registered with TPO in recent months and part was down to the rental sector itself increasing. But it's clear some rogue letting agents remain and we're behind any campaign to improve the quality and image of the industry. And finally, there was the story of Josh Hocking from Lytham St Anne's who's taken a rather unusual route to sell his house. He's not using a traditional estate agent or even an online one. He's selling his home on Facebook. He's already found a tenant for an apartment this way, so now he's hoping his £195,000 house will sell too. It's worth logging on and sharing his advert. If your sharing goes to the person who finally buys, Josh says he'll give you £1,000. 
well. That's it for another week. If you want to check the status of what's happening in our industry, check in every day to read the news from Estate Agent Today and Letting Agent Today. We carry breaking news every day and you can also subscribe to our email newsletter. Thanks very much for watching. See you next time.